Many Christians today have the idea that the world has always been just like it is right now. It almost seems like they believe Noah got up every Sunday morning, put on a suit and tie, and went to church. They seem to think that everyone in the Bible lived like we do today in America, and they want the Bible to revolve around them. But let's go over some things to show that life ain't like it used to be. In Genesis 2, 7, the Bible says, God formed man out of the dust of the ground. Adam and Eve got here without a mother or a father. That in itself is something extremely different than today. People have a hard time believing the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. They say it isn't possible for a man to be born of a virgin. But Adam and Eve got here without a mother or a father. Many Christians today don't want to admit in a difference in the Old Testament. But they believe this truth about Adam and Eve, which is an obvious difference. And God gives a direct command to Adam and Eve not to eat off of a tree. If they abstain from eating off of it, then they live forever. But if they do eat off of it, they die both spiritually and later on physically. That obviously isn't like today. We don't abstain from something to keep eternal life. We have eternal life forever after we believe the gospel. Or there is no tree or anything else that can take our eternal life away if we do it. What about the lifespan of people in the book of Genesis? Genesis 5.5 5 says Adam lived 930 years and he died. Do you know of anyone today personally living 930 years? The lifespan of the people in Genesis is amazing and shows a huge difference from how it is today. There was this guy named Enoch in the book of Genesis. He walked with God and it says he was not for God took him. How many times you see somebody walk with God so good that he just God just translates them up to the third heaven without them even dying? They could have put out an amber alert and search parties and put Enoch on milk cartons, but he was not, for God took him. You couldn't find him here on earth. He was gone. Do you see God randomly doing this today? Uh, today, things like umbrellas and roofs and ponchos and rain jackets and other clothes we wear for the weather is a very normal thing. But in the book of Genesis, there was no need for an umbrella. If you look at Genesis 2, 5, and 6, it says, And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth, and watered the whole face of the ground. So it hadn't even rained yet at this point. It ain't like it used to be. Now we are used to rain. We are used to having to wear clothing for certain kinds of weather. But Noah never even saw it rain until the flood. He was already way past 100 years old at this time. Can you imagine being in a world where it hadn't rained before and then all of a sudden it starts raining and raining hard? Uh, God told Noah to build an ark and get in the ark. If he didn't do this, then he would perish with the ungodly. How often does God bring a natural disaster to kill everyone who doesn't get in an ark or do something he said? The ones who had faith got in the boat, and the ones who didn't have faith missed the boat and didn't have enough sense to get in out of the rain. In Genesis 11, they built a tower of Babel. They came together against God, so he went down and confounded their language. You see God doing something like this today? Other than in that tongue-speaking church where the judgment of God on them is them being so silly that they'll get up and speak a bunch of gibberish. I believe that's the judgment of God. They went away from the Bible so much that now they believe it's the right thing to get up and make a fool of theirself every Sunday. But how often do you see men doing animal sacrifices like Noah, Abraham, Moses, and the children of Israel? That's a huge difference. We don't get forgiveness for animal sacrifices today. We get forgiveness through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the, a huge difference. Noah wasn't even allowed to eat meat until Genesis 9. All the animals and people were vegetarians. And how true is this today? All the people forbidding you to eat meat today are teaching doctrines of devils, as it says in 1 Timothy verse 4, uh, chapter 4. 
Uh, God told Abraham he was going to bless his seed and promised him more kids than he could even count and started out by giving him Isaac when Abraham was a hundred years old. Does this happen much today? Do you see people in the nursing home pushing out babies at a hundred years old? In the Old Testament, the high priest had this thing called a Urim and Thummim. If someone wanted an answer from God, they would get this Urim and Thummim thing and it had lights on it and stuff and it could get them an answer from God. Satan's version of this would be a Ouija board. But today we we don't have a device like a Urim and Thummim. We don't have something like this to give us an answer from God. We have a Bible. So it ain't like it used to be. People in Genesis didn't have a Bible. Noah didn't even have a Bible or know who the Apostle Paul was. Paul hadn't even been born yet. There was no such thing as a King James Bible believer. They had God speaking to them and that was it. They operated by sight more than by faith. Now we operate by faith and not by sight. That's a huge difference. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Noah believed God would bring him through the flood, but he definitely saw some things we don't see today, and that made him operate more by sight. For example, when Adam and Eve sinned, there was a cherub in front of the Garden of Eden with a flaming sword. And that cherub probably stayed up there up until the flood. So Noah saw it. Uh, he was told stories about it and how things have, have been that was passed down from Adam. Uh, like their kids telling their kids and their kids telling their kids. And you got to remember these people lived 900 and something years. So they knew their great, 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 great grandparents. There was all kinds of stories being told and people operated by sight more than faith. And when your kids walk down the street to school, they don't see cherubs with flaming swords. It ain't like it used to be. Genesis 6-4 talks about the sons of God mixing with the daughters of men. This was the fallen angels mixing with human women. It produced giants on the earth. And most Christians today would call this a sci-fi fantasy fairy tale. Yet they will believe all the other strength or strange things in Genesis. I just don't see this as that far-fetched when you take into account all the crazy, bizarre things in the book of Genesis. But it ain't like it used to be. Because when we go out in town, we don't see giants who have a height like cedars, as it describes some of the giants in Amos chapter 2 and verse 9. In the book of Exodus, Moses split the Red Sea with his rod, and the children of Israel walked across it on dry ground. They did the same thing in Joshua chapter 3 when they crossed the Jordan with the Ark of the Covenant. Is this something you see every day here in America? No, because it ain't like it used to be. We operate by faith and not by sight. And we aren't a bunch of Jews that require a sign. The Jews require a sign as it says in 1 Corinthians one twenty two, And God doesn't split the traffic on Sundays when you are late for church so that you can have a clear path to get to a church satan's powers aren't even as noticeable noticeable today as they were in exodus when the magicians turn their rods or their magic wands into snakes i believe some baptists think aaron and moses wore a suit and tie and had a king james bible but they obviously wore some kind of skirt because it says in exodus twenty twenty six that they couldn't make steps to go up to the altar because if they made steps to go up to the altar then men would see their nakedness. If they were wearing, wearing pants, that wouldn't be so. They think Jesus had a crew cut and a shaved head, a shaved beard. But if this is true, then he broke the law. In Leviticus 19.27 it says, Ye shall not round the corners of your heads, neither shalt thou mar the corners of thy beard. It ain't just like today where God wants men to have short hair. Uh, Solomon had 700 wives and 300 concubines. You see anybody like that today here in America? The Bible doesn't revolve around Americans in 2017. In 1 Kings 18.40, the prophet Elijah, God's man, slew a bunch of false prophets. How does this line up with how we operate today? Uh, 2 Corinthians 10.4 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. 
It ain't like it used to be. We aren't supposed to kill anybody. We use the words of God to cut to the heart. We don't use physical weapons and violence on people that are infidels. We don't kill unbelievers. Uh, how often do you see your favorite preacher go up to the third heaven in chariots of fire with horses of fire without him even dying? Uh, space travel with no space suit. Him and Enoch were the two that went to the third heaven instead of paradise in the heart of the earth. That's something else that shows it ain't like it used to be. In the Old Testament, the righteous went to paradise in the heart of the earth because Jesus hadn't shed his blood yet. In the New Testament, when we die, we go straight to the third heaven because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And these guys today who are against dispensations, who want rid of the differences, will try their best to get rid of paradise in the heart of the earth. They do this because they believe everybody's always been saved the same way. And if they've always been saved the same way, then they would have to have gone to the same place. But they didn't. They went to paradise and that was in the heart of the earth before Jesus resurrected. But they believe everybody always went to the third heaven. And they'll use 2 Corinthians 12 2 as a proof text. Even though that when the apostle Paul saw paradise and went up to the third heaven, it was after the resurrection when paradise was already in the third heaven. Uh, how many men do you see today that can kill 1,000 men at one time with the jawbone of an ass like Samson did? And an angel in 2 Kings 19.35 kills thousands of men. It says, And it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went out and smote in the camp of the Assy Assyrians an hundred fourscore and five thousand. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. Do you see whole armies getting bloodied up by the angel of the Lord today? Uh, King David committed both adultery and murder. By the law, he was supposed to be stoned to death. That's another difference. Do we stone people to death for adultery today and murder? But David didn't get stoned because God gave him the sheer mercies of David, and he didn't die. One of the few with eternal security in the Old Testament. We know the Bible is true, and the Bible says God doesn't change but he deals with men differently. As you can see, King David is one of the prime examples of God dealing with men differently. God gave David the sure mercies of David. If he gave David the sure mercies of David and he didn't give it to somebody else, is that not God dealing with someone differently? Is it or is it not? We know God does not change. We know God changeth not. We know those verses. But does God not deal with some people differently? You have to be honest. Quit trying to make your, your doctrine of your denomination uh, be more acceptable than what the Bible says. The Bible is true, but every man is a liar when he tries to make the Bible fit his belief. David had the Holy Spirit, but prayed that God wouldn't take it away from him. Completely different from today. It ain't like it used to be. Now, it's like this. The Bible says, In whom ye also trusted, if they, that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. We are sealed with the Holy Ghost. We can't lose it. But Samson lost it. King Saul lost it. And that's a big difference. And I've even heard them guys that say there is no difference in the Old Testament. They'll say, Well, in the Old Testament, they didn't have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit like we do today. So even they, they're seeing some differences in the Old Testament. Actually, some people did have the Holy Spirit in them and not just on them. It was in them. But they could lose it. David prayed that he wouldn't get it taken from him. Samson got it taken away from him. King Saul got it taken away from him. In Isaiah 20, God has Isaiah go around naked for a sign. How many preachers today does God tell to go around naked and preach behind the pulpit naked today? None. It ain't like it used to be. We don't require a sign in the church age. And the devil possessed men in Luke 8.35 was clothed and in his right mind when the devils left him. Showing that people who walk around naked are devil possessed. Peter talks about modest apparel. No apparel at all isn't modest. God doesn't tell men to preach naked. For a sign. Uh, in Hosea 1-2, God tells Hosea to take a wife of the whoredoms. Is God will for you to go out and marry a whore on the street? 
No, because it ain't like it used to be. God doesn't tell men to do things like Second Corinthians 6.14 says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? Do you see Jesus Christ walking on earth in the flesh, healing the sick, lame, blind, and casting out devils? Some guys committed the unpardonable sin when Jesus was here in the flesh because they said he hath an unclean spirit in Matthew chapter 12. We can't commit the unpardonable sin today because Jesus isn't here in the flesh walking on earth like he was then. It ain't like it used to be. Peter could heal the sick just by his shadow passing over them in Acts chapter 5 and 15. Paul had handkerchiefs and aprons that could heal people in Acts 19.12. Do you see this today? Do you see the gift of tongues that the apostles had in Acts chapter 2? It ain't like it used to be. Not only is it not like it used to be, it ain't like it's going to be. Before the tribulation starts, the body of Christ, which is all born again believers, will be translated before the time of Jacob's trouble begins. Notice it's called the time of Jacob's trouble because it's for the Jews. This is a great transition into a time where people are going to start walking by not just faith, but also sight. The Jews require a sign, and what better sign to start the time of Jacob's trouble than the rapture of the church? It's not every day that you see millions of people get caught up in the air to be with Jesus Christ. They will be leaving behind their clothes, false, false teeth, blood, glasses. You will have a pile of clothes laying on the floor at Walmart and slipping up in their blood because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Our new glorified bodies probably won't even have blood because Jesus said in his glorified body, A spirit hath not flesh and bone as you see me have. But sometime after this translation of the saints, the time of Jacob's trouble will begin. The sign gifts will be coming back because the Jews require a sign, and the time of Jacob's trouble is primarily for the Jew. Uh, during this time, you are going to have the Antichrist performing signs and lying wonders. Moses and Elijah will be shooting fire out of their mouth. Devilish locusts will come up out of the bottomless pit with faces like men and hair like women. Men will be desiring to die and won't be able to die. And the waters are going to turn to blood. Then at the end you will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with all his saints in flaming fire, taking, taking vengeance on them that know not God. After this you have the Millennial Kingdom, where 100 year olds will be considered a young age. At, uh, Isaiah 65 20 says, There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not filled his days. For the child shall die an hundred years old, but the sinner being a hundred years old, shall be accursed. There will be a literal, visible lake of fire on the earth in the land of Edomita, Edomia, as it talks about in Isaiah 34. This will truly be hell on earth, where men will be cast bodily into the lake of fire. There will be no excuse for going against Jesus Christ, because they will see him visibly on his throne with millions of people that have glorified bodies just like him. There will be no atheist. After this 1,000 years are over and Satan and his army are defeated once and for all, the great white throne judgment will take place, and then eternity will be after this. The Bible talks about of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. So all of these men who made it into eternity with natural bodies will populate the planets and outer space for eternity. So it ain't like it's going to be. Uh, the biggest thing, it ain't like it's going to be, how is there going to be any atheists when you can see Jesus Christ in the flesh right in front of you? And you're going to see uh, glorified bodies, bodies that aren't like regular human bodies that can go at the speed of light, teleport, and everything else right in front of your face. How could you be an atheist? Uh, people desire for this present time to be like it's going to be. They want glorified bodies through transhumanism. They want to do space travel and populate the planets. They want to do what they want 24 hours a day. They want to get rid of sickness and, di and disease and get rid of wars. But this won't happen until eternity. So as you can see, this world ain't like it used to be, and it ain't like it's gonna be. To deny huge differences throughout the Bible is to deny the Bible itself. But if you do want to see how the world is going to be in the future and the millennial kingdom and in eternity and not spend your eternity in a lake of fire, 
then you need to believe the gospel of 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. So the gospel is this. Jesus Christ died. He died for you. He was buried and he rose again the third day. He died for you because you're a sinner. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's why you need a Savior is because you're a sinner and them sins separate you from God. And if you don't get a payment for them sins, then you go to hell forever. But Jesus Christ took our place and he's willing to give you his righteousness if you will believe on him putting your trust in his finished work on the cross. Quit relying on your own self-righteousness to get you to heaven and rely on Jesus Christ. So he died for you, and how did he die? Colossians 1.14 says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, he died by shedding his blood. And those, that blood is how we get forgiveness. That blood is what washes away our sins. So if you want to be saved, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe the gospel, death, burial, and resurrection. Acts 16.31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved.